Hello, this is Robert Rickover at Body Learning, and today my guest is Jessica Wolf, who is an Alexander Technique teacher in New York City. She also t teaches in the Union Square area. She also is on the faculty of the Yale School of Drama in New Haven, Connecticut. She's been teaching for over 30 years, and she also has had a long association with Carl Stahl, who is uh, a, a man who dedicated his life to research and discoveries in, in breathing. And she now uh, uh, has created a body of work called The Art of Breathing. She, she teaches this uh, to Alexander teachers, and she incorporates it in her in her in her general uh, Alexander technique teaching, this is actually uh, our second interview. In the first interview, uh, we talked about this uh, her how she works with breathing in in very general w way, and today we're going to she's going to actually talk us through two of the procedures that she uses in her own teaching. So, Jessica, welcome to the show. Thank you, Robert. And I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, thanks. Um, I would like to encourage everybody to lie down, to find a comfortable place to lie down, maybe with some uh, a mat, a yoga mat underneath, or a comfortable cushioning of a carpet, something where you feel comfortable and you can rest there for almost 10 minutes. Um, I'm going to take you through an exercise now of imagination. And um, normally, I would, if I was teaching you, I might even have my hands on you when I was doing this. So um, you, you can, I invite you to lie down on your back with your knees bent and your feet placed flat on the floor, approximately a hip width apart. And Find some books so that your head is supported by the books. And as your head rests on the book, then you can rest your arms on your abdomen or down by your side. And know that this kind of lying down, this semi-supine lying down, is a wonderful way to take time to release the muscular tensions that accumulate over a day. And... It's a nice way to reestablish the connection between your breath and different parts of your body. So um, I call this active rest because I don't want anybody to go to sleep and I don't want you to wander off and go through your checklist of things that you have to do, but instead to attend to your body, attend to yourself. It's a great gift. Um, I'd, let's just begin by thinking, imagining the ocean, and waking up all of your senses so that you feel the spray of the ocean touching your skin and you might taste the salt on your lips. You may be smelling that wonderful fresh air and seeing that whole expansive ocean in front of you. And last but not least, listening and hearing the ongoing motion the movement of the waves. Noticing that sometimes those waves come in with tremendous impact and they crash onto the beach. And then there's that stillness. The rhythm changes and maybe one or two of them come onto the beach, but it's just a swishing sound. And then you get those small little waves that kind of say lap, lap, and they hit the shoreline and then they go back out. And there are moments when you're standing and watching and it seems like there's stillness in the ocean. But then lo and behold, that new wave is formed way out there and it crests and then it just gets reabsorbed back into the water. And if you can use those thoughts of that kind of rhythm to transfer it now to yourself and to the ongoing movement of your breath. Notice that there is no mechanical rhythm to your breath. We don't have to breathe in on four counts and breathe out on four counts. 
Rather, some breaths are going to come in and they're going to be huge and the entire circumference of your body changes shape. And at other times, they're going to be small. You may even have a little catch-up breath. Sometimes it'll feel like the body is just transitioning and there's a quiet pause. But in fact, there really is something happen. You're either at the beginning, middle, or end of your out-breath or the beginning, middle, or end of your in-breath. But this rhythmical functioning can be ongoing and we don't have to disturb it at all. And ultimately, if we think about this and we practice this, it will be like how we feel when we're at the ocean. We have the confidence, we trust that the rhythmic movement of the water is ongoing, that it will never stop. Because I think one of the big fears that people have is that if they don't actively attend to their breathing, their breathing won't happen for itself. But it, actually, the breathing just does itself. So with this first introduction of rhythmic ease, constant ongoing change, the breath that you just let out will never be repeated. A new breath is going to return. I'd like you to specifically now notice if there's any stiffening going on in your body. And very specifically, begin to release where there's stiffening. If there's any pressure in your body, begin to let go of that and bring your attention to your lower back. And without doing anything, imagine that your whole lower back is spreading into width and including your back into the awareness of your breath, because breathing is three-dimensional, let your back respond to that ongoing shape change, the filling and emptying. So we don't have to take the breath. We're trusting that the breath will come back after the exhalation. And that brings me to something that's very important, which is that we begin on the out-breath with the exhalation. So the, act, the key to a full and easy inhale is actually a full and easy exhale. Who knew? So if it's a container that has to be refilled, it first has to be emptied. And many people are told to, quote unquote, take a breath. But trying to take in new air on top of stale air is like wiping a counter with a waterlogged sponge. So when we breathe out, we're letting go of the carbon dioxide, which, by the way, is a known stressor to the system, to the nervous system. So we let this air out, we follow the breath out effortlessly so that a full and easy automatic inhale can occur. You're going to try this by beginning with a silent la. Now this is a very particular way of letting the mouth open a half an inch. You're still lying on the floor comfortably and the tip of your tongue is going to wag or flap making the motion of a silent la, la, la. But you're not going to make sound. Your mouth is open. This encourages a complete exhalation. It's just a little more active than just lying here and watching, being quiet and watching the breath move out. This is going to trigger the reflexive, natural inhalation. You follow your breath to its logical conclusion. You never force it. Why don't you guys all try doing four or five of these silent la-la-las, create a little series, following your breath to its logical conclusion on that silent la, and then allowing that reflexive response to occur so that the new breath can come in. And reminding yourself that your breath 
can work in your back as much as it does in the front. And then just let it go. Take a break from those silent laws. And notice, notice if there's been a shift, if there's been a shift physically, emotionally, or kinesthetically. Now, kinesthetically is that awareness of yourself either in space or from inside. Is there less pressure in your back? Maybe your chest is feeling a little more released. What's happening in your hip joints? How's that jaw, the tongue, the back of the throat? Anyway, we're going to go on to one more. In in fact, take a a break and just allow your knees to drop just a little bit on the diagonal from side to side. You know what that's like to just shift your weight and let your knees drop a little very gently. And of course, let your breath out as you're doing this. So don't hold your breath when you're letting your knees go from side to side. And that's just a few times and then come right back up so your feet are flat on the floor and your knees are pointing up. You may need to move that book a little bit, an inch or two underneath your head and reestablish the idea of the torso being three-dimensional and your whole back feeling long and deep and wide. Let's go into this second procedure, which is very similar to the first, except I call it the silent count because you're going to silently count from 1 to 10 using your articulators, which are your lips and your tongue and your mouth. So silently, one, two, three, four, five, I'm whispering, but you know that this is not even a whisper. It's just a silent count. You don't have to enunciate. It can be sloppy. It's without effort. Know that any kind of effort is going to create tension, and that tension will interfere with the release of your breath. So a series of four or five exhalations following your breath to its logical conclusion without disturbing the rhythmic reflex of your breath at this moment today. So you're silently counting out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But it's silent. And then just again, that must be about 5 for you. Let that go. And check in again with yourself and feel that three-dimensional movement of the whole torso. Notice that breathing may be a little easier. Maybe the ribs are beginning to feel a little more mobile. You could place one of your hands on your belly at your belly button level. You can place the other hand on your chest and listen. I use the word listen. Feel with your hands the result of the breath that moves in and out of your body effortlessly. This ongoing shape change that's occurring. And then giving yourself time to give yourself a nice stretch out, maybe even feeding in a yawn, stretching gently without tightening in the neck or the jaw, without holding your breath. Roll over to your side, rest there for a moment, and then very gently come up to standing. And what I'd like you to consider as you're doing this is how giving yourself this time to go into active rest and to take eight or ten minutes for yourself. In today's world where there's so many respiratory complications that come from, you know, the environmental pollutants and the stresses that we feel and the muscular skeletal pain that we experience, sometimes asthma other respiratory disease, other syndromes that we may have. This breathing work is a real soothing element to our systems and can be quite helpful. Okay, hopefully you're sitting up now. And I'd like you to come and sit down in the chair and imagine that 
you want to move forward either to your dining room table to eat or to your desk where your computer is. And sitting can be very challenging because um, habits that are previously unconscious like slumping or collapsing are very common. It's a very common stimulus to think, oh, my plate is in front of me, but it's down on the table, so I'm going to slump down to that plate to eat my dinner. Or my keyboard's in front of me, but it's down on my desk, so I'm going to move down to my desk. Let's all do the wrong thing for a moment. Face your computer or something in front of you, an imaginary dining, dining room table, and Pivot forward at your sitting bones, on your sitting bones, at your hip joints. It's just an easy incline. And notice that you can do that with your head leading. That's an easy rolling motion of the pelvis. And then come back. Okay, I just took you guys through it the right way. But now I want you to do what might be your habit. Collapse your chest and go down. And here please begin to notice what you're doing to your breath. In addition to the tightness in the jaw, the condensing feeling at the back of the neck, the heaviness of your chest and shoulders right now is putting a lot of pressure on your breathing. Is the diaphragm moving much at all? I don't think so. Diaphragm is that muscle that's appearing mid-torso. And if there's so much pressure and I'm bending right from that area, that area that divides my chest from my abdomen, I don't think my diaphragm has much range of motion. So come on back up. And try one more habit of misuse that interferes with breathing that you may not be aware of quite as much, but go into what you think your mother told you to do when your mother might have said, sit up straight or that old West Point military idea of pulling your shoulders back and lifting your chest forward and straightening your neck. And then try moving forward to a dinner table here and bring your attention specifically to your breath. <laughs> you might notice immediately that your mid-torso is not doing much. There's very little mobility. That's, again, interfering with that easy exchange of air. So come on back. And let that go. And instead, let's just try that easy movement of the head leading the whole body into an incline where the movement feels like you're generously letting go of your pelvis so you roll on top of your legs. And stay there for a moment. And imagine that your torso, which is three-dimensional, is now going to be considered the breathing container. And let your breath move through that container effortlessly on what Alexander teachers teach, calling it a whispered ah. So everybody's going to let their breath out. There's something in the pipes already. We just let that breath out. When the new breath returns, tip of the tongue goes to the lower teeth and the whispered ah moves out your mouth. Now remember, you don't have to go back and take the breath. Just release if you're tightening in your belly or tightening in your ribs and the breath will simply return. You are inspired. Imagine that you might want to say something. And again, you whisper that ah vowel. Now allow your head to lead so you come out of that incline and place a hand on your lower back. And gently see out of your eyes and another whispered ah. This time, as the whisper is moving out, Remember that the air can fuel the length along your spine. So you're thinking, you're directing your breath upward and out your eyes as you look out. Now that's just an image, but it's nice to think that the breath can feed your ability to communicate, to see, to observe. And then take your hand away. 
Release your legs around your hip joints if there's any holding. Remind yourself that your torso is now interchangeable with the concept of a breathing container. And let the breath out. Everything depends upon how much air moves out so that easy inhale can occur. Now, just one last thing, which can be a sound. You can let your breath out on that nice sound of this sung vowel of the ah. 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 You can just allow that breath and that sound to move together without sinking down, without pushing it out. Just allow that sound and breath to move along the length of your spine. Think of your breath as a column of air. Think of it fueling your spine. And then a new breath can return easily and fully, just the way you like it. And that's what I'm going to tell you about today, Robert. Oh, that's very nice. So the 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 kind of meta message I'm getting from from that is that um, air will come in pretty much all by itself if you um, get the old stuff out. Would that that's be? That's right. Would that be a kind of a simplistic way of putting it? An accurate way of putting it? You said it very very well. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Well, I think we're, I think this might be a good place to uh, end this podcast. And um, unless there's anything you want to add or say in addition to what you have. Um, I would like to add that um, I have trained now uh, three, three groups of 16 teachers. I've trained 48 teachers who are Alexander teachers all over the country. Um, to integrate the principles of the art of breathing with into their Alexander lessons. And I have a website, uh, theartofbreathing.net or jessicawolf.net. Um, on my website, there's a contact page that lists all the teachers that are um, teaching this work. Okay, and we'll put and, it. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and again, I want to thank you. Thank you for doing what you do, getting the word out. Oh, thank you. We'll put a link to your your website next to the uh, to the interview. So my my guest today, uh, and this is the second of two interviews we've done. My guest today has been Jessica Wolf, who is an Alexander Technique teacher in New York City, in the Union Square area. She also teaches at the Yale School of Drama in New Haven. If you want to get, if you're in either of those areas, you can contact her through her website. You can also find other teachers that she has, Alexander teachers that she has trained in this method. And I would say that even if you can't find an Alexander teacher specifically trained in this method, but you want to improve your breathing, um, just a regular old Alexander teacher would probably help you quite a bit as well. <laughs> right. So, and you can you can find you can find Alexander teachers at alexandertechnique.com to which there will also be a, a link by this interview. Jessica, thank you so much for being on the show today. Robert, thank you. <laughs> 